Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and in this video I am going to go through all the functions of our new Studio One MIDI controller for Stream Deck devices. Now assume that you have already gone through the installation process uh, via the PDF instructions that were included in the download, or you've watched our installation video. Uh, and if you have not, I have the link uh, listed below. So assuming that you've got everything set up, this is the main page that you're presented with. And this will allow us to control many aspects of Studio One via MIDI commands. So let's go into Studio One. I've got just a, a simple little song loaded up here. You can see that we have different tracks indicated by the display name that correspond with the display name under Studio One tracks. And we can select them just by pressing the select button. If you want to select the drums, you can see it selects it in our Studio One application. You'll also notice that if I go to the computer and select a different track, that the Stream Deck corresponds because of the MIDI communication. Now with that track selected, it allows me to control the read, write, solo, and mute, and the volume of that track while it's selected. So pressing read, write, solo, and mute affects the nature of that track. And you'll find that this volume control will control the volume for the track that is currently selected. So you can see when we press up, we get the, the digital readout, as well as the sliding fader that matches the Studio One application. The slider next to it controls our master. So with our piano selected here, we're going to solo this track and let's play it. And we can adjust the volume. Simple as that. Now you notice we've got track and bank buttons up here. What the track will allow us to do is select the next appropriate track as we go through. Instead of selecting them here, you can just select the next one. So you can see I've got in my project here, I've got 10 tracks of audio plus a reverb and a delay track. So I've got 12 tracks in total. Well, I only have eight slots on the, on the Stream Deck device. So that's where Bank comes in. Bank will take us to the next bank of eight tracks. So when I press Bank to the right, I am now presented with the next bank of eight tracks, but we only have four extra here. So it tacks on those four extra. So it's, everything's kind of uh, has slid along. Now, when we press play, you will see that our time bar display will display the beats. Of course, we have metronome control. We can add an audio track or an instrument track. So let's jump into the console page here. And you can see this is a console that is reflecting the console in our Studio One application with the same sort of controls that I showed you in the selected track. But each one of these banks represent the tracks in our console. So we can move the accent, the drums, the piano, and we have control of the solos on each track here as well. So if we want to just solo the bass, or sorry, the drums and the piano, just want to solo the bass, etc. So that gives us control here, and just like in the previous page, the bank will take us to the next bank of eight, or up to eight tracks that we have available to us. Now at the top here, this will open our solo, mute, and arm track page. Same sort of thing. We can see the track name indicated here, and we have control to solo, mute, and arm for each of these tracks. Once again, the bank and the tracks will take us through the different tracks available in our application. Pan will take us to the pan page. 
and we have control over left and right panning of each of our individual tracks. So let's just solo the bass, go into our pan, and press play, pan to the right, pan to the left, and you can see it's also indicated the same on our Studio One application. And if I also pan it here, you'll see that the Stream Deck updates as well. So over to our plugin page here, what this will allow us to do is control any different aspects of most of the plugins that are available to us in Studio One. So with a plugin activated there, let's go to a track that has a plugin. Our bass track has a plugin here. Let's open it up and we want to make sure that we've got control lit up here and that our plugin is active. Click on any one of the uh, controls that you want to control via the Stream Deck. So we'll start from left to right here. So I'll click on Presence once, go over to the Stream Deck, click on it doesn't matter the top or the bottom uh, of, of a pot. Click once, then click Assign to V-Pot. You'll see that it shows up here. You can see that it says Presence here. And we can go through to the different uh, controls, and here I'll just quickly show you. Uh, presence will now move up and down. So we move clockwise on the top, counterclockwise on the bottom pot. And we can go through, click on Base, Click for the next one, assign VPOT, base shows up there, and we can quickly just go through for each one of these. And now we have all six controls of this plugin available to us on the Stream Deck. Let's turn it to master. Increase treble, increase bass, reduce presence. And if you want to use this same plugin for a different track, let's go over and let's say we have it here. We'll turn it on for our piano as well you'll find that even though it's on a different track, we still have control of the plugin. So these controls stay attached to the plugin in our project. You can see as I switch back over to the bass track that these values will switch to the values I have for the bass plugin. Now if you want to unassign any of these and start from scratch, you can click on a button without having clicked on anything on the interface assigned to VPOT and that takes it out. Now let's say that we've got another plugin on this track and I'll just quickly load a, uh, an EQ for example here and we can tell our plugin page to go to the next plugin. And because I had previously mapped these keys to the different keys for the Pro EQ earlier, I still have the functionality. It still is allowing me to control all the parameters that I'd already set up. And I can switch between Pro EQ and Empire by going back and forth between the plugins. So there's a plugin for my Empire. Click to the next plugin, EQ. And of course the channel effects editor hides or shows our channel effects. So when you move back to our console page, you will see that you try to control our volume sliders like before. You still have access and control, but not all the names were coming back. So hit track name display and that brings all of our functionality back to this page. So remember that if you're on plugin, see plugin is turned off. Turn plugin on, that enables it. If I move back, enable us by track name display. Now one further thing here on our console page, you can see as normal we are adjusting our volume faders. 
we can hit the flip fader pan button here to quickly just adjust our pan with the slider knobs here. Take that off, we're back to our volume. It's just a quick way of just accessing pan rather than having to go into the pan page. Now you may find that occasionally uh, that you come back to your stream deck and uh, you're getting error messages and nothing seems to be working. There's a communication issue. And sometimes you can even go to your plugin and you'll see that the uh, the graphics don't don't even don't even show up. Well, unfortunately, this is a, a known issue with the Stream Deck devices and how they continue communication with MIDI devices. So currently, the the most simple solution around this is to go back to your Stream Deck software, click on the store into the plugins. Search again for MIDI. You will obviously have had this installed. We're going to uninstall it. it. Takes just a second. And then immediately just install it again. And you may find that you may need to restart Stream Deck. Now, once you've restarted your Stream Deck, you have functionality back again. But you notice that you don't have the track names here. Well, the reason for that is that Stream Deck needs to be sent the information from the DAW to populate these track names. So, for example, if I was to go into Piano and change its name to Keys, you'll see that it shows up here on the Stream Deck device. It's because it's a new command that's now been sent to Stream Deck. Stream Deck has read it. I'm going to change that back to piano. And if we just close this song and load our song back up, you'll see the names populate because those name, those track names are now being sent to the Stream Deck. If Stream Deck starts and the project is already loaded, it isn't receiving those names. So a bit of a workaround on that. Hopefully this helps in your workflow and it makes your life just a little bit easier in your studio. Till next time, thanks for watching.